Okay. I'll mm-hmm. tell you, like for me personally, and the other thing that's really important in this is the order of healing is very important as it relates to the client's system. It's not the therapist who should dictate, let's work on this first, let's work on this second. Mm-hmm. Let's mm-hmm. work on your gender identity first and then your trauma second or whatever. You know, your sexual orientation, which by the way, has totally different than, gen- you know, gender and sexual orientation is something that people confuse all the time. They're right. totally separate issues, right? So, when we're looking at somebody who has trauma and anybody with gender issues or sexual orientation issues has trauma in my definition, like is, is, is traumatic by definition, especially if you live in this world, even today, I'll say, Keith. But what ends up happening is you have this series of traumas. You want to trust the client's wisdom around the order of healing there. Okay. Personally, I had a lot of trauma growing up, okay? I couldn't even explore my sexual orientation at all until my trauma was healed. Oh, wow, okay? yeah. Not a, so so yeah. most of my therapy, I, and I'm a therapy lifer, by the way. I'm going to be in therapy forever, okay? And that's okay. But I had to work through, and a lot of the trauma that I experienced was probably in retrospect because I was a little gay boy in a world that gay was not even allowed to be. Okay. You're saying that you couldn't really begin to talk about your sexual orientation until you had healed some of the trauma first. Totally, right. totally. I mean, I remember as a little boy, like looking around at men, it's like, oh, I'm supposed to be like that. That's what mm-hmm. a man is, or that's what a boy is. I have to act like that. Mm-hmm. So I was not connected to me because who I was got slammed, bullied, attacked, and beaten up. So Mm -hmm. I learned very quickly, I have to act like that because that's what a man's supposed to act like, okay? Mm -hmm. So I have so So much- So you exiled these other parts, I imagine. Yeah, you know, interestingly enough, I exiled myself Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to be in the world. Right. Okay, and so for me personally, and everybody's different, I had to heal a lot of that trauma. So I, so I looked like a man. I thought, oh, got to be like a man. I married a woman like a man. Like I did all these things that I was supposed mm-hmm. to do, right? I, I was, you know, I did that. And it wasn't until I entered therapy, healed a lot of my trauma that I then was able to see who, the emergence of me started coming out. Like this is mm-hmm. who I am. Okay. Mm-hmm. So other people might need to deal with orientation or gender first before they're healing their trauma or their system tells them, no, we got to work on this trauma first before we can look into that. So yeah, I'm, it's yeah. important, I would say, for the therapist to not impose their order yeah. on a client and to really trust that internal wisdom. Right, right. Right. And, and, and going back to the idea of supporting, so you're saying really listen to the client's parts, get to know which parts need attention first, perhaps, yeah. work with those first. Yeah. And then the others will queue up and you'll begin to work with other parts as they free up more, more space, more self energy, more integration, right? With, with, with the, with reality and all the other parts. Exactly. Um,